All right, now if we take a look at Larry Kameen's uh, satchel that he did here for his character Evelyn in the uh, in the character artist bootcamp over at GAI, it's a great example of how a professional goes about developing a texture, giving himself the control that he needs to art direct it, while using the power of software, of the software itself, to the fullest of its ability. All right, so we're going to look here in this section, we're going to look at the three steps three really simple steps that you need to take to establish a really good texture. And this is to establish the itness of it, right? To make sure that it looks like what it is. So what we're going to do is, and this is really one of the general goals all the time. Let's just look at a color real quick. We want from the color itself, not from materials, but from the color itself, we want to have a sense that this is what it's supposed to be to be. So we want to feel like this is actually leather all the way around. And then as soon as we just throw on a couple of little specular points and things like that, then it just pops into life. But the key right now is how do we develop the itness in three simple steps? It's not as hard as you might think. And I'll show you here in just a couple of, uh, in, in a real simple measure. So the three steps are that first you start with a base texture. Okay, a base texture that has the scale, the medium color range, and you'll see why that's important uh, later. So it's going to have the scale, it's going to have the medium color range, and by scale I mean scale of detail. You're going to see that here in just a second. The medium color range, and it's going to have some uh, general, uh, you know, how do I say it? It's going to have some uh, repetition to it. Some tileability is probably good. You don't want to hand paint this because in order for us to use the software to the most advantage, we're going to want to be doing this as quickly and easily as possible. And so the base texture is something you could spend a day on. It's something you could spend an hour on. And if we're going to use the software efficiently, we want to try the hour first. Then the next thing that you do is you're going to come in here and you're going to start to apply procedurals. You're going to layer procedurals on top of your base texture so that it breaks it up and it starts to take what might have once been repetitive and start to give it a little bit more uh, of a natural quality. And then once you've got the procedurals on top of that, then you're going to start to layer on the maps to really fine tune the look. So you start to add some ambient occlusion, you start to add some self-shadowing with a normal map, for example, or with a displacement map or something of that nature, right? But these are the three simple steps. This is the kind of stuff that we teach you in this boot camp. I'm giving them to you right now because it's not enough to just know this. You have to do it. And I want you to come into this boot camp prepared that this is what you have to do. But you got to keep in mind that you got to burn this stuff into your genetic code. And burning it into your genetic code requires repetition and practice and repetition. So let's go and head over into Larry's version of this. And what we'll do, you know, right off the bat, you can see one of the cool things about substance is it gives you all these different layer sets. I'll just call it that. Okay. So each part, which is really important, you have to have separation to really help something have that itness. You gotta, people notice if there's one texture stretching from one part to another and that's inappropriate, right? They'll notice if there is a texture moving from the, uh, the body of the satchel to the strap and these are actually separate pieces. They will notice that. So you have to have this separation and Larry's done a fantastic job of doing that. And so I'm gonna turn everything else off and look at just this main bag. Then I'm gonna open up that main bag and start to unpack that. And you can see it's got about six layers in here. And let's just zoom in a little bit. And one of the first things that we have to establish when we're establishing this um, basic texture, remember, three simple steps. And right now we're going to talk about the basic texture. And step one is making sure that you establish the scale of detail. Now, of course, right now we're looking at this and it's got all this beautiful stuff, but watch. I'm going to turn them off one by one. And there you go. That, that's the base. 
texture that he starts with. It looks like something you go into Photoshop and you kind of use one or two textures, stamps, and you kind of clone it all the way around to kind of add some, some, you know, I don't know, some change in, in it so it's not entirely repetitive. But people who are a little bit more pro at this, you'll notice there's similar shapes moving throughout it. And those similar shapes indicate absolutely this is repetitive. There's the same size little dots all over the place. Okay, repetitive. Not obvious. Larry's removed it enough to where he can work with it, but not so much that he had to spend several hours to make it perfect. Because that's not part of this. You're going to use the workflow to your advantage. Use the software. And Substance works with this idea of texture plus procedural equals freaking amazing. All right. But step number one, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Step number one, look at this Larry's leather bag here. He's got it on normal setting. It's 100% opacity. But you look over here to the UV scale, and he's got it UV scaled to 8. Now, let's undo this a little bit. Let's lower this and take a look. Let's take this down to like 1 or 1 1.6. And if you're looking over here on the left, hey, it looks kind of cool. Let's throw the material on. Hey, it's pretty nice. It's like crocodile, right? But what is it? This is where you got to understand what is, what's the itness. If you're serious about this and you're sculpting one of these and texture painting one of these bags, you went to Nordstrom's or Macy's or Target or wherever they have something similar and you bought one of those bags. Not just photo reference, buy the bag. You can return it tomorrow. Buy the bag because it's the little details that are going to make you hireable. And it's the little details here that got Larry that job at Sony San Diego. It's the little details that we want to make sure that you're paying attention to in the boot camp. So this is a particular kind of animal hide, not crocodile, not elephant. And Larry's done his homework. And this is a bit of a better fit, somewhere at around 8. But when you set it to 8, you barely see it. Right? You have to zoom in to even see where all of that pore level detail and skin wrinkling is. Set your scale. Make sure that you have got your scale accurate. If this is not accurate, we don't pass go. You don't collect your $200. It doesn't look awesome. Get your scale correct. Right? Make sure it's your medium color, not your lightest color, not your darkest color. And you're going to see that here in just a second. And the repetition and tileability, but not too much repetition, not too much um, hand painting. Just enough so that when we take these next steps, it's all going to work. So the next step is to layer procedurals on top of this. So we come in and we add some procedural that's going to start to lighten. And that's the only thing it does. It just lightens the color. And I'm looking at my own leather bag right over here next to me, and it's got the exact same effect. There are areas of it that are lighter, and then there are areas of it that are darker. And so he separated those out into two separate layers so that he can art direct those. So this is, I think, set up as a soft light on this. And he can go in and dial this up or dial this down. Somebody can come by, look at it while he's working on it and say, no, sorry, you know, look, set the opacity at 12%. Yeah, that's perfect. Leave it at 12%. I like what he had it at, at 17. We come in into the dark layer. And you see the dark layer's got all these extra little bits, these little utilities, right? He's using the software to really help him get the most out of it. He's throwing that on as a multiply layer. And here, if somebody comes in and says, yeah, lower that, keep it. You know, again, I like where he put it. It's a really good number. He could come in here and he could go clever monkey style and try a linear burn, right? And this is the beauty of it is because you don't have to know exactly what you want. You can use the software to start to experiment and see what it will uncover for you. Okay, that does not look like it's good. That looks crazy. Overlay and then multiply. Experiment. Play with it. Because you're layering procedure on top of procedural. But look what he was able to do with one basic texture, slightly repetitive, and then two procedurals over the top of that. You cannot see the repetitive quality of this anymore. It's gone. 
And then the next stage, third stage, remember, the third stage is to throw some maps on top of that. So one of the maps that he threw on top of that, if you hover over it, this looks like a map that he could have gotten out of, let's just say, ZBrush or XNormal. It looks like a displacement map, so to speak, but a displacement map that he's altered. Those areas where they're white, those are going to be the areas where he really wants them to kind of push forward. Or he wants some sort of different behavior, depending on what the settings are and, and what the layer is set to and, and all of that stuff. So in this case, you might be able to notice that around the satchel, he's got it in the map, right in this area where the UVs are, he's assigned a white color. All right, And we can check that out. We can just go into this. Let's turn it on. And we're going to say put this at normal. We're going to set that all the way to 100. And there you go. That's what the map looks like, basically. But he's using the map now with this black quality around the rims to basically layer on and establish just this extra little bit of detail. And in many ways, it's also a form of ambient occlusion because he's got some darkness on the side. But he's also lightening up these areas where these things connect, which is, you know, this is how it is. It's just a style. There's this uh, lighter fabric that's kind of sewn in or used to kind of reinforce the stitching. Let's set that at 50. There we go. And then he's got a couple of more maps set up. So if we take a look at, let's say, this next map that's hanging out in there. This is the form of ambient occlusion. And you, you might have noticed that he's already kind of painted in ambient occlusion quite a bit in this fill layer. But we go in here and it's just this tiny little bit. You know, let's zoom in there, and let's zoom in um, in here, and see if we can notice that. Right here in this edge, it's very soft. We turn the material on. Where you notice it is right next to the stitching, and it just separates the stitching and all of these elements from each other and adds that extra little bit. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's that 5% that takes the detail to the next level. All right, and again, this is all still part of the map section. So he's got that on a multiply, and he's got it 100% because really he's dealing with a very white texture. So he's modulated this, or he's just really pulled this out of, um, of a ZBrush just right at the point where he wanted it. And then there's one more of the exact same map alter it again, right? And these are all part of the stuff that you can do inside of Substance to really just give you some amazing, amazing versatility in how you handle these, these textures. Let's see what this does. Yeah. But one of the maps, one of the maps that I think is really cool, the first one that we looked at, let's turn these guys off, is this one. Because if you look at that again, let's set this back to normal and set that back to 100. Notice how it's got this kind of little wrinkling baked into it. And so when we put that back at 50% and we put that back at a soft light, we turn that on and off. It adds this really um, beautiful modeling to the work. It adds this kind of planar quality that happens right in here. And then it adds a little bit of, you know, just this kind of leather folding upon itself and pushed in a certain way so that the wrinkles get kind of embedded in its, in its structure. Uh, and that adds depth and, and life to it. So keep in mind, you know, if we come back to these, to these elements, he put the base texture in there. He put procedurals, right? And these are, again, still in this kind of 2D fashion. It's a 2D procedural that kind of modifies it. But when he comes in here into the maps, he takes a moment to kind of, within the map itself, kind of give it some self-shadowing and a little bit of modeling to really give it, I don't know, just that extra je ne sais quoi, whatever you want to say, just really adds a little bit more life to the texture, in my opinion. If you come there, it's like, okay, you know, it's pretty generic. It's a substance painter. It looks like you did a texture and you did procedural. But then you throw the maps on. 
And the maps are really what helps take it to the next level because the maps are coming from the sculpt. The maps are coming from what you've done in Marvelous Designer, what you've done in ZBrush, what you've done in Maya. They come from the manual work that you've done uh, to really give this the quality that it should have, right? And it takes it to that next level. You got to have these three steps, these three simple steps to take your texturing to the next level. And if you do that using a tool as powerful as Substance Painter, then sky's the limit. Now let's take a look at the texture that Larry developed for his character's face. Again, this is his character um, out of the Game Art Institute boot camp. And uh, we're in Substance Painter. And the key things that we need to look at is we need to be mindful of a base texture any sort of procedurals that you can add on top of that and any sort of maps that you can throw in there to give it its specificity, specific to your model, as opposed to, say, just some basic 2D textures and procedurals that anybody could develop, right? The maps you gotta keep in mind, this is the uniqueness. This is what's gonna make it yours. So I'm gonna go into just the color mode here. I'm just pressing C on the keyboard. And let's just get rid of everything and see if we can understand or start to reverse engineer this texture. All right, let's open this up and open up that kind of layer set that's in there. There you go, got a whole bunch of this. So let's start with this, this skin face layer set that he's developed for us here, and then we can go in and we can explore and see what the other elements add. So I've removed those, and again, I'm gonna come through and just remove everything. It's taking a moment to update. You can see the red bar down at the bottom. He starts with the simplest of base textures. There's no poor detail in this at all. Actually, what he ends up doing later on is he puts the poor texture in, in these fill layers up here. And if you hover over them, there's an ambient occlusion there. It, it'll take a little bit to see that, but he's got what could pass or appears to be a cavity mask here that's gonna really just highlight. In fact, that's what people have gotten the best results out of is using cavity masks generated out of ZBrush to really highlight the pore detail. Not a normal map, not a displacement map, but cavity maps. Those can be very powerful um, to add that extra level of detail. You see how you get the pore in there, All right? And if you really wanna see one of them, let's just come in here, I'll turn this one off, and just set it to normal. Set that opacity all the way up. And he's got a gradient on there to just give it some subsurface quality. But there you go, right? So, but this, this sits on top of a whole bunch of other stuff. And so we want to kind of unpack that first, and then we'll come back and, uh, and take a look at all of this. So let's take that back to about 25, and I'm going to turn those off. All right, let's get ourselves back into the scale set. Uh, and so the first, or the texture set. So the first thing that we wanted to look at with a base texture is the scale. But the scale, we've already got because he establishes that with the cavity map, okay? So the next things that we're looking for is we're looking for medium color. We're looking for simplicity. It's not gonna take us too long. You don't get simpler than this. This is using the software to the best of its ability. Use this basic color, right? And then he's throwing in a little bit of red. Let's just turn that on. Let's go into that. And it's showing us that this is a paint layer. So he's manually painting these using alphas. Let's just get rid of this log. Some alphas inside of here. He's adding in some blue. Okay, let's get rid of the red so you can see where the blue is. It's very light. Okay, but notice he's got the opacity very low. So he might paint it darker. I've just said it at almost 100. But just because you paint it there doesn't mean that that's where it needs to stay. You know, art direct these pieces. Get them where you want them to be. Okay, let's get into the ears. A little bit of red in there. Okay, and again, all paint layers. So he starts with a really basic skin tone. He establishes the red, he establishes blue, which is actually desaturation. 
That's really the kind of key component there. If you take a red and you desaturate it, it starts to look blue in comparison to the other reds. But you know, let's get into the whole color theory discussion at another point. Then he comes in and he starts to add in these other elements. Now, notice that these other elements, let's say this fractal sum, let's turn off all these other guys and just see, what does this do? Let's turn its uh, opacity all the way up. Looks like noise, doesn't it? Again, using the software to the maximum power, basic texture, like a basic skin tone, a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of stuff around the ears, okay? Another fill layer with a screen layer mode that's doing the light, right? So he's repeating this pattern that he's got of in one layer do dark, in another layer do light, so that you can blend these to really make them work, to really give the sense of a high and a low that you like. All right, and again, these sit on top of all this other stuff that you're doing to help create this modeled quality. All right, but let's do this one at a time. Let's take a look at this next layer. What's this next layer? Okay, so again, look at that screen is set to 5%. Let's take that all the way up. He's taking a variation on the white, and you can tell that the values are clamped a little bit more, so this is a little bit harder edge in here as opposed to this one, where it's all a little bit softer. And he's got levels on here. He's got a bunch of stuff working in here. Okay, it's really good that he's just going in and layering procedural on top of procedural on top of procedural to help him discover what it is. And then we got on top of that, this guy. Again, super low opacity, but let's take a look at what it is. And there you go. All right? Which is, again, very similar to a, uh, a texture that's been cloned. You use the clones, it's just clone stamp inside of Photoshop to just kind of replicate it all across the model and establish some kind of basic quality to it. It doesn't need to be all dramatic like that. That's probably a little closer to what it was, right? But we throw it in as a multiply, and what that's going to do is take the dark areas. The light areas are going to get ignored, but the dark areas are going to go in and just add that extra little bit of depth in there. Let's take that all the way down to, I think he had it at 5. And all we're trying to do is just move the needle. So basic texture, add in a little bit of painting on top of that. Add in your procedurals on top of that, right? And then come in and add your maps. This is, this is another little bit of a paint layer that's thrown in there, a little bit of red. But here we come into the fill layers. Now the fill layers are going to be the maps, right? So you see the UV scale the UV scale, and these are being scaled to one because they're matching the UV set. They've been generated in ZBrush or something of that nature. So if we turn these guys on, this has been sculpted and worked inside of ZBrush. He's got the ambient occlusion up here at the top, I believe that one is. And then it's got a gradient of red, as does this one, which is the cavities, and it's got a gradient of red as well. And the gradient of red really adds in that extra quality of a little bit of subsurface scattering. A lot of times when people do skin or they do textures, they try to find the right setting. How do I do subsurface? How do I do subsurface right? And when you are really texturing, you're not trying to do it right. What you're trying to do is make something look awesome. That's it, right? What do you have to do to make it look awesome? There are so many things happening inside this game engine with subsurface scattering being tweaked here or faked here. Or the light isn't necessarily you know, based on photons. And you know, everything is changing and developing and it'll evolve throughout the pipeline. The goal for you isn't to do it quote unquote right. The goal for you is to make it look awesome. And so in order for you to make it look awesome, you got to be able to kind of work the system. 
Let's put this back into an M so you're looking at the materials. Work the system and become a master of working the system because that's what's going to give you job security. Not that you knew exactly how to do it and you understand the math behind it and all of that. There's a different job. I mean, there, that absolutely f works for a different job where you're dealing with the programming side of it, but not using substance. In this particular case, what we want to do is we want to be able to develop a beautiful, realistic texture that doesn't require us to copy some photograph, but uses the system, the software, a formula, or in simple terms, just a workflow that takes simple things, layers them on top of each other to achieve complexity. That's what you want, right? If you can do that, and if you can show people you can do that, and you can talk about it like I just talked about it, you can put out YouTube videos, you can explain your textures, you can do talks at Substance with uh, Painter events, then the sky's the limit for you, my friend. And that's what we want to do in this boot camp, is we want to make sure that you get in and you start to learn how to do this and develop your capacity and your understanding so that you're not just another mouse jockey, but you know how to work the system and you're focused on just the things that move the needle. That's the kind of stuff that companies hire. That's the kind of stuff that we want you to be able to do. All right? So I hope you found this lesson useful on painting. Make sure uh, to apply for your place in the boot camp today. Make sure you get in there because spaces are limited and we are waiting to talk to you. 15 minutes on the phone with me can save you years. So make sure you apply today. Special thanks to Larry Kameen for letting me use his model. And congrats again, Larry, on getting that job. You are going to be awesome and you have worked hard for it, my friend. All right, everybody else, make sure you apply today. I look forward to talking to you. Remember, 15 minutes can save you years.